Trench boxes are generally the first choice for the rapid shoring of trench runs up to a maximum of 4 metres wide by 6 metres deep in non-urban environments where ground conditions are reasonable. They are generally used in multiples to continuously support a length of trench. Manhole boxes are used for rapid construction of manhole chambers and interceptors. They can be used for shoring of single chambers or in conjunction with trench boxes. Backhoe boxes in either trench or manhole box form perform the same function. However, they are designed to be handled with smaller 180 degree excavators and are therefore smaller in size and lighter in construction. Their use is limited to 4 metre deep trenches. Boxes are available in a wide variety of sizes and weights. They comprise of a base box, typically around 2.5 metres high and up to two top extension boxes for deeper excavations. A 360 degree excavator is required to handle all boxes except backhoe types, particularly as large pulling forces can be required to extract boxes in cohesive ground. Two types of strutting systems are available a fully adjustable strut with a screw thread arrangement or a pinned incrementally adjustable strut known as the multi-box strut as this video sequence illustrates. The units are usually delivered to site broken down in component form. It is essential for the supervisor to be familiar with the equipment by first thoroughly reading the user guide supplied by Ground Force with the higher documentation. The first stage in the assembly is to identify all components paying particular attention to the lifting and handling points on the box panels. Lifting points are denoted by red paint. Handling points, which are only used for assembling the box, are generally yellow. The panels must only be lifted at these designated points. The following sequence shows the assembly of a standard trench box. The first plate is laid on the ground with the strut housings uppermost. The four struts are assembled to the correct size as dictated by the width of the trench or manhole and are inserted into the housings and pinned in place. All pins must be secured with R clips facing inwards. The second plate is inverted and using the handling points in the rear face lifted horizontally and moved over the upstanding struts. The plate is slowly lowered into the struts which are carefully manoeuvred to locate into the housings. Care must be taken to avoid trapping fingers as the panel is lowered. Once in place the remaining pins and clips are inserted to complete the assembly. If the struts require further adjustments this can be done by taking the weight of the upper panel, removing the strut pins, lifting the panel to its required width before reinserting the pins through the appropriate holes. The box is then carefully lifted onto its cutting edge and is now ready for use. This assembly method is a generic process which is similar for all types of trench boxes and manhole boxes. It is generally good practice to tow out the box by 50mm at the base to avoid it getting wedged in the trench while pushing it down. Trench boxes are designed to be installed by pushing them into the ground as the excavation proceeds. This method ensures that the sides of the trench are always supported. The following sequence shows the installation of a standard trench box. The installation commences by marking out the appropriate width of the trench. Digging commences, regularly checking during the dig that the trench dimensions are correct and the sides are vertical. A competent person must assess as to how much the excavation can be pre-dug before inserting the box. It is recommended that this does not exceed one meter. Once the box is installed, any voids between the back of the panels and the ground should be backfilled to prevent unwanted ground movement. Soil is removed from the trench by digging between the panels. The box is pushed into the ground as the excavation proceeds. The panels must only be pushed at the corners and the difference in vertical movement of one corner relative to the next nearest corner should not exceed 100 to 150 millimetres otherwise damage may occur to the box components. Dig out and repeat the pushing operation on the corners. 
Continue to repeat this operation until the top edge of the panel is approximately 200 mm above ground level. Excessive force should not be used in pushing down the panels. If the full excavation depth has not been reached, a top extension unit should be placed on the base and connected using the four panel connectors supplied. Alternatively, if the full depth is not much greater than the depth of the plate, the ground may be reduced or battered back locally and the box pushed down to full depth. If this method is used, the top edge of the box should remain at least 150 mm above the surrounding ground to prevent material falling into the trench. Continue to dig within the box and push down as the excavation proceeds, adding an extension whenever the top edge reaches ground level. The total depth that can be supported will depend on the predicted ground pressure. If there is any doubt, consult ground force. Once the final depth is reached, handrail panels should be fitted for greater safety around the top of the trench. Ladder safe, combined handrails and access panels are available for most box types. This installation method is a standard process which can be followed for all types of trench boxes and manhole boxes. Trench boxes are intended to be installed in multiples, end to end depending on the length of the trench to be supported, with boxes being leapfrogged as the pipe laying and backfill sequences proceed. Repeat the installation process for the adjacent trench box as required. Please note that only a single box length is shown in this installation sequence. Manhole boxes are available in several sizes to suit the size of the manhole rings being installed. They are typically installed as individual units at the ends of trench runs and can have the ends blanked off with an end panel if conditions dictate. When using boxes without end panels, as a general rule, in trenches up to 4 metres deep, a minimum of three boxes will allow safe working in the middle section while excavation, backfilling and compaction operations take place in the end units. In trenches greater than 4 metres deep, more units, lower and upper modules, will be required to allow a safe angle of batter to the ground typically 45 degrees at each end of the trench. The extraction process begins by first removing the handrail panels. Backfill material is placed and compacted in accordance with the specification for the works. It is normal for this to be done in stages as the box is pulled out of the ground to minimise any voids. Extraction of box modules must be carried out using suitable chain slings attached to the dedicated lifting points, usually denoted by red paint. Do not wrap chains around the box struts to use as lifting points. There are several ways in which the box can be removed from the trench. In granular ground conditions as shown here, it is possible to extract the box using a four-leg chain attached to each corner and rock the box to ease it out of the ground. If this method is unsuccessful, then try a two-point pull by attaching hooks to any two lifting points and attempt to free a panel. Care must be taken not to twist the box unduly to prevent damage occurring. In severe cases, it will be necessary to do a single point lift over each corner in turn. A special heavy-duty chain should be used for this method of extraction. Any chains used for extraction of boxes must relate to the pulling capacity of the excavator or damage to the chains can occur. Once the box is lifted clear, it should be stored on level ground for reuse or dismantled, which is basically a reverse of the assembly procedure. After disassembly, all components should be cleaned and stacked to await collection. Pins should be replaced within the struts to avoid unnecessary charges being incurred. Please observe the following points whilst using this equipment. Locate underground services before excavating. Inspect all components at the start of every shift. Assess weights accurately. Use adequate and appropriately certified lifting equipment. Ensure hooks engage fully into lifting points prior to lifting. 
ensure that the clear internal dimensions of the box is sufficient to comfortably accommodate the excavator bucket. Tow out base boxes by 50mm. Ensure all pins and clips are correctly fitted. Be aware of hand pinch points during assembly and dismantling. Use all four panel connectors to attach the upper boxes. Only use the designated lifting or handling points. Provide support over the full height of the dig. Provide edge protection or handrail panels. Use a secured ladder to enter and leave the shored area. Push the plates at the corner positions only. Keep personnel clear of the excavator slewing zone. Lay the box flat before dismantling. Store assembled boxes in a safe manner on firm level ground. Do not exit the box into an unsupported area. Do not adjust incremental struts without laying the box down. Do not push plates down by more than 100mm at a time. Do not snatch the chain during removal. Do not use handling points for lifting or pulling assembled boxes. Do not wrap chains around the struts to use as lifting points. Do not climb on the struts, always use a secured ladder. Do not hang or store materials on the struts. Do not excessively force the box into the ground. Do not laterally load struts to close off the end of the trench. Do not permit personnel in the box during excavation and installation. Do not drag the box by any means. Do not use more than two top boxes unless approved in writing by ground force. And do not fly the boxes above the base of the excavation unless approved by a competent person. Ground Force Shoreco. Be safe and sure.